to the hive. A good heist requires preparation, and thorough preparation takes time, something they had precious little of. So far, everything was in order. Jeff, Iggy, and Tish all agreed to do their part. Beck radioed Luca that night with a simple and covert message. We are locked and loaded on my end. And Rolo, after a lengthy confession, managed to persuade Roxy and Fitz to help. He stowed away in mission control for the night to avoid attracting attention. Rolo, being uniquely suited for the role, would be the first to breach perennial harvest. The outfit provided by Jeff wasn't perfect, but a convincing disguise is 10% wardrobe, 90% confidence. Rolo took a few vigorous breaths and shook out his arms. He had to think quick. Rollo sighed, adjusting his tool belt. With a stroke of his mustache, Rollo proceeded into the Perennial Harvest Headquarters. He stammered and flipped through the pages of his clipboard. Rollo interrupted with urgency in his voice. Rollo panicked. The distraction was enough for Rollo to regain his confidence. The clipboard fumbled around in a frenzy. Solomon stopped in his tracks. A veneer of confusion flashed across Solomon's face. His words rushed out dramatically.
Solomon's facade briefly faltered. Luca happened to notice a plaque above the door. Luca tried the handle. Solomon leaned forward to examine the mechanism. Luca smiled and looked at his watch. Mimed a quick hat tip and ambled off with a whistle. The light on the keypad changed from red to green. Luca switched on his walkie talkie. On the computer screen, a green cursor blinked in a password field. Luca pecked out his best guess, underground secrets. The screen blinked to life. Columns of green numbers glowed on a black background. Solomon's jaw clenched into a half-smile. Luca quickly scanned the columns for number 24601. Once again, Luca scrutinized the numbers on the screen. In that moment of distraction, Solomon reached forward and pressed a large red button. He quickly skimmed the screen with his finger. Mr. Kerr approached with a sneer and spoke into his walkie-talkie. With self-satisfaction, he called into the hallway. Nellie leaned over to examine his teeth.
Nelly sighed. Solomon muttered inaudibly. Solomon once again muttered under his breath. tugged on each of the cabinets. <laughs> Luca held his hand up to the ashtray. With a subtle, quivering lip, a smile crawled across Solomon's face. They heard the trampling of frantic footsteps from the hallway. Her eyes searched the floor in thought. Solomon watched eagerly, waiting for the flicker of Epiphany. With a sickened look, she peered into his soul. Solomon clapped with genuine delight. Solomon glanced down, examining his youthful form. Kerr 
presented it with a theatrical twirl of the hand. Before he could finish, Rollo snatched the vial from Kerr's palm. Rollo casually tossed the vial to Luca. Luca jiggled the vial mockingly. She held it tightly behind her back. Solomon sighed, speaking in crisp, measured syllables. He pursed his lips with feigned sincerity. A deep uncertainty washed over Beck. She looked to Nellie shakily. With a dispirited nod, Nellie sighed in defeat. Beck slowly approached Solomon. With apprehension, Beck conceded. Solomon pocketed the vial and brushed off his shoulder with a sharp flick. The blood drained from Kerr's face. Solomon shook his head with gratification. A muffled applause resonated faintly through the walls. Nellie was staring at the floor, deep in thought. The color dropped from Luca's face. Luca was overwhelmed with emotion. A sudden explosion sounded from the hull. Chapter 8 